we have Dr. Samba Kawa, uh, who is the coordinator and team leader of Feed the Future program in the Economic Growth and Environment Office of USAID Nigeria that has been quite busy with these areas. He has worked also with USAID Bureau for Resilience and Food Security, and USAID has been quite active in this field. He has a bit of exposure also to Liberia, and he has been the country support officer of USAID missions in several African countries, not just Liberia, in fact. He, he will give us a, a very concrete uh, perspective of uh, value chains. Samba, you have the floor. You are most welcome. We're very pleased to have you. Thank you very, very much. When we look at the Sustainable Development Goals, which talks about ending hunger, achieving food security, and improving nutrition, and promoting a, a sustainable agriculture, we have not done very well on that yet. Also, the requirement of CADA, that countries devote some amount of their, I think 10% of their GDP to agriculture. Not many countries are doing well on that. So I will pick up from that and then say, adding the COVID-19 pandemic uh, onto these factors makes it even more complex. Knowing that agriculture is actually very central and a source of livelihood and income for most Africans. Also, urbanization, increased population, and as well as in, uh, income factors uh, do impact the economies of countries. Non agricultural activities account for a large proportion of activities at this point, especially in value addition. Non activities are growing in the rural areas, so these are contributing to people actually diversifying their activities. Agriculture is a big employer in, in most developing countries, so true for Africa and Asia. So with this background, I just want to move on to Feed the Future. The Feed the Future uh, initiative, many might know, was uh, actually uh, brought up, uh, uh, developed or signed on by President Obama and in 2011, it took off. Currently, we have 14 countries that are target countries or focus countries. Uh, I'm speaking from Nigeria, and Nigeria is one of those countries. Feed the Future relies mainly on uh, building partnerships with uh, country partners. We come to uh, Feed the Future goes to a country that has been selected through several criteria and then work with the host government, uh, the civil society, the private sector to, 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 to improve the lives and livelihoods of the smallholder farmers. We use a lot of indicators to measure our successes or our failures. We, we rely very much on two factors in any host country. One of them being the commitment to what level is this government and the people ready to partner in, in advancing food security and agriculture? And there are many ways we mention that uh, with sub, sub indicators that we can use. We also measure capacity. Uh, how able is this uh, government or country to actually engage in this partnership? Because we think without their active engagement, it will be very difficult. Thank you. Uh, very, very good question. Also tough, I can say. We, indeed, we meet with many, many actors. Uh, we look mainly to advance the women and children, the youth, and uh, these are mainly smallholder farmers. Yet, like I said earlier, we go to small, we look for smallholder business, uh, small businesses, medium businesses, as well as large businesses. We have come across several uh, actors that, I, uh, that are really ready to, to, to that, has, that can contribute to the uh, uh, continental trade, free trade uh, agreement. For instance, uh, here in Nigeria, I'm speak, like I said, uh, I'm now in Nigeria, I was in Liberia, 
Uh, we have an, uh, a project we call the West Africa Trade Hub activity. This activity gives grants to small businesses and to smallholder farmers that are in associations. So small businesses come, they ask maybe one can ask for it could be 50,000, 1 million. So all we ask is a one-to-one. -one. You come with, for instance, a million and you get another million grants, which you are not going to pay back a million dollars. And then this is a vehicle for you to carry out your plans. So we have a lot of interest in this. We are having women's organizations. We are having youth organizations uh, that are expressing interest. These people are having their uh, applications reviewed and those we find that are credible and have the potential or are actually doing something already are the ones who will consider uh, to receive these grants. So to, to answer your question clearly, I think there are, there are many able and ready partners uh, who, who want to join and who can contribute to the free trade agreement. It only depends on several factors that we have discussed here already, so I don't need to go into those. Uh, but one of them, the key factors is actually having access to finance, which is what the trade, the trade hub activity is doing. Well, you know, we are all struggling, uh, Samba, with uh, how we make sure that this is not going to be uh, one more of those projects of regional integration that, you know, do not really change on the ground. Uh, I'm very hopeful. Uh, I'm saying this because I'm very hopeful that uh, it is possible this time around to do it differently. Mm -hmm.